It's only been open for a couple of years, but already the Park Casino is facing financial turmoil. Tyler Orton with Business in Vancouver is joining us now with more on this. So, Tyler, what kind of trouble are we talking about here? Well, we're just finding out that for the second time, the Park Casino has failed to make good on interest payments due on more than half a billion dollars in financing. These are Canadian dollars, I should say, because this project was raised with U.S. funds totaling $415 million U.S. S&P Global Ratings, which has access to non-public data on the casino, has just downgraded it to selective default, which means it can still make payments on it to some debtors but not to all. So the question is, how did it get here? I wouldn't look too hard at, say, bad publicity, such as when Toronto rapper Drake last fall accused it of profiling. These are more macro issues. Keep in mind that we have the BC government introducing new anti-money regulations, uh, anti-money laundering regulations, and also minority stakeholder Dundee Corporation says that these projects take about two to three years to get going, work out the kinks, the operating costs, but Park needs a few more years. It only opened up in 2017. Revenue right now, it's exceeding operating costs, which is good, but the company still has to address all of its $112 million in interest payments. That's hmm. the big problem facing it right now. All right, uh, turning to another story you're also following today. This has to do with the Canadian housing market. We know the prices have been falling, but we're getting a better idea of just how resilient the market might be. Yeah, well, for uh, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, they have a new analysis that's saying that the risks are waning for the country's housing market as a whole. It just downgraded its vulnerability rating from high to moderate during the last quarter. This snaps a trend going back two and a half years where for the last 10 quarters, the market across the country was rated as high vulnerability. But for Vancouver, the Crown Agency says that our market maintains a high degree of vulnerability. So a bit of a gulf between us and the rest of the country. The CMHC says that there are signs that overheating and overvaluation in this market beginning to ease. And this comes just as the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver revealed new data yesterday revealing that home sales last month fell 29% mm. in the region, while the benchmark price for detached homes fell 11% year over year. So we are seeing these changes on a data level and it's being reflected in the CMHC's new analysis for our region and the country. All right, gives us something to think about. Uh, Tyler, thanks so much. Thank you so much, Sonia. All right, coming up, a league of their own.